This is End Screen Noise. My name is Colin Dixon, founder and chief analyst at End Screen Media, and today is March 11th, 2016. Variety reports that there are two new video services that are using DVDs as the basis of their streaming business. The first is called VidAngel, and their idea is pretty simple. They let you buy a movie for $20. Then they will stream that movie to you, and you can sell it back to them afterwards. Now, if you take a day to watch, that you can sell it back to them for $19. If you take two days, $18. So basically you're paying a dollar a night to watch the movie. Now they also have uh, another feature where they do crowdsourcing to create filters so that you can watch cleaned up versions of movies. For example, you could watch Mad Max without all the violence. Of course, there wouldn't be much movie to watch in Mad Max's case. Uh, but basically, the crowdsourcing idea is that people identify all the places in the movies where there is bad language, sex, violence, etc. And when you play it back, you set the filter that works for you. So if you want to eliminate the bad language, boo, you just set that filter and you can watch the movie without bad language. Uh, so that is VidAngel. The second service is called MovieSwap, and this is a French Kickstarter effort. Um, basically, it's a slightly different approach than VidAngel. What they want you to do is to send them your DVDs. So you mail them all of the DVDs in your collection, and they hold them in a warehouse. And they put digital copies in your personal locker of all of those uh, movies. Now, you can of course watch those movies anytime you like from any of your devices, but the real reason Movie Swap exists is they wanna make it very, very easy for you to trade a movie with somebody else so that you can watch movies that you've not seen before. Now, of course, you can do this very easily yourself. You can swap with neighbors, etc. But what Movie Swap is doing is they're making it easy to do this with anybody. Uh, so you will be able to stream any movie that happens to be in the collection if somebody will swap it with you. Now over time they will build an absolutely enormous library and probably have pretty much every movie there is out there including the very recent movies. They will be in in their warehouse as well to be swapped. Uh, so, uh, this is a pretty interesting approach, as is VidAngel. Uh, but, if you are beginning to think you've heard this song before, boy, I think you probably are. There's a couple of services uh, that have come along in the past that sure sound a lot like what both MovieSwap and VidAngel are doing. Uh, for example, Zadiva. Zadiva was a service that started in 2011 that basically allowed you to rent a physical DVD. They actually had a copy of a DVD and they would plop that into a DVD player and they would stream you the result. So they contended that this was completely legal. Uh, right? There's a physical DVD. Nobody else can be watching it while you're watching it. And there's a physical DVD player. So essentially they said you're renting the disc and a DVD to pay it back. Well, the courts didn't agree and they shut down Zadiva uh, at the end of 2011. Now, VidAngel sounds an awful lot like Zadiva. Uh, the dodge of you buying it and selling back to them? Well, that's really just the rental. So uh, that's, that's Zadiva, but what about MovieSwap? MovieSwap's a little bit more problematic, I think. Uh, first of all, if you look at what is going on in the market with Ultraviolet, there's some precedent for what they're doing. You can walk into a Walmart store with your DVD or your Blu-ray, pay a small fee, and Walmart will enable a digital copy of that movie to appear in your ultraviolet locker. Now that's pretty much half of Movie Swap's service, right? Uh, so there's precedent for that that has not been challenged as illegal. 
The problem comes, of course, when you make it very, very easy to swap. So you can easily change the contents of your locker. So uh, now the question is, what will the court say? Well, of course, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so I have no qualification to say what the courts will say. Uh, but I can say that we can look at what they said in these Zadiva cases and in the Aereo case. And in Aereo's case, that's particularly important, I think, when we think about movie swap. Because what the court said, and in fact, this was, of course, the Supreme Court, they said, look, it doesn't matter what your implementation is in the back end. And Aereo was saying what you were doing was renting an aerial and a tuna, and they were just streaming you the, the results of what was coming out of the tuna. The, the court said it doesn't matter. You look and act like a cable company. Therefore, you need to pay a license. That this is a broadcast, a public broadcast, and you need to buy a license. And boy, doesn't that sound an awful lot like both Vid VidAngel and MovieSwap, what they're really doing with these discs. But of course, uh, the courts could find otherwise and these services could be held legal. But I think one thing for sure is going to happen. If VidAngel and MovieSwap gain anything like an, a decent sized audience, they will be challenged by the movie industry. And uh, so we will almost certainly see litigation over these two if they find any success whatsoever. Uh, but you know, what the courts will find, I guess we'll have to wait and see for that challenge. And you can bet we'll be talking about it here on End Screen Noise. We'll see you again next time.